well uh, welcome back friends uh, this time i'm going to talk about uh, 10 another important questions uh, with respect to embedded systems and microprocessor microcontroller area uh, these are very fundamental again i'm touching only the fundamentals because they are mostly touched in all the interviews wherever you go uh, so i'm going to do that today first one uh, we already dealt 10 questions so i request you guys to see the first 10 questions for you to get comfortable with the second set of 10 questions and i'll touch about 50 questions totally to make the uh, embedded systems part quite complete as a program for now first question as program counter there are there is another register also called stack point or register which is equally respected why is it so first uh, uh, please listen to the term stack point or register stack pointer is also a, a register uh, which helps you to point to the top of the stack which means it holds the address of the top of the stack stack is a temporary area uh, which can be used for storage of some temporary variables or arguments when you pass to call the function all the stuff so i need to have a pointer to understand where exactly my uh, stack is where exactly i wish to move in the stack so stack pointer will help you to navigate from the top to the bottom using that you can move from there to here now second question how big or small the stack can be can program and increase the size of the size of the stack if need be well this is a nice question this is asked in most of the interviews uh, most of the processor or the controllers will have a stack size fixed as 128 MB, 256 MB, something like that. It's manufacturing uh, procedure and they will follow that and they will uh, give you a, a straight guideline like 128 MB is your stack size. But there is, always a con there is always a comfort given to the programmer to increase the stack size if need be through the scratch pad memory. There is an additional memory available in the RAM called scratch pad memory. If at all your stack size is not limited for you to work, you can move your stack pointer to the address of the scratch pad memory and you can use this area as your stack. So please understand stack size is fixed but you can go to another area called a scratch pad memory to work on further. Quote an example for an embedded system and justify your choice. Also justify how it is a real time system. Simple. I used to normally refer this example everywhere. Pacemaker. What is a pacemaker? A pacemaker is a real time embedded system which will keep monitoring the heartbeat. If it goes slow, it will take a counteracting action to make sure that the heartbeat is brought back to the normal condition. Is it an embedded system? Yes, it does only, only, only one work. That work is to monitor the heartbeat and to bring the action back. And then, is it a real-time system? Yes. When the heartbeat goes slow, it should work immediately. It cannot work tomorrow. Is it a real-time system? Absolutely yes. It's real-time and reactive as well. Can someone call laptop or desktop an embedded system? Justify. Both are not embedded systems. They are called general purpose operating system based machines which are generally referred as general purpose system. In my laptop I can do multiple things. In my desktop I can do multiple things. And I have an operating system called Ubuntu or Windows which is not a real time operating system. Hence they do not qualify themselves to be an embedded systems. Can someone, oh, I just completed it. Uh, when building a system with a microprocessor, one cannot blindly select the microprocessor. What are the considerations? that one need to give towards selecting a microprocessor? Well, this is a very fundamental question. There are so many things that one should really think about when we are selecting a microprocessor for a particular uh, operation or a process. First one, uh, more the number of transistors, the better can be the performance. So the number of transistors inside the processor or the controller should be known. Second, micron. What is a micron? A micron is nothing but uh, smallest wire in the chip. Uh, which can be uh, used to connect, interconnect smallest components in the inside the um, microprocessor. So micron width is very very important. And the third thing is uh, speed, clock speed. What is the clock speed that the processor has to work on? So that's very important. And then data width. What is the amount of data that you are going to handle? Is it a 8 bit or a 16 bit or a 32 bit data? And finally, MIPS, million instructions per second. How many million instructions per second can the microprocessor process? Above all this, there is one very important factor. Can you afford the cost? I can buy only with this particular amount. I cannot pay more than that. Then you will have to really go for a trade-off to select which sort of processor or controller you need. But generally, these are all the factors that people are looking into. Uh, just to recollect, first number of transistors, second micron width, third MAPS, fourth cost, fifth data width, and finally, it can be clock speed. So please remember folks, this is a very important question. What exactly is the role of the bus in a microprocessor or a microcontroller? Well, whenever we take a microprocessor or a microcontroller, we will send some inputs into the ALU to process it. ALU is nothing but arithmetic and logical unit. So how does the data go from one register to ALU? Simple, that's through the bus. After the ALU gets the work done, where does it send the data to? It sends the data to a register. 
how does it go it goes only through the bus so bus is nothing but the medium or the channel that takes your data from one place to another that's it what is ale ale how is it useful um, ale is nothing but utter slash enable uh, whenever we have a microprocessor or a microcontroller say for example 8085 a microprocessor uh, we have ale there ale is utter slash enable it will help the address lines and the data lines to be used as one particular pin a particular pin say for example pin number 40 if ale is there that particular pin can hold address or data when it is high when ale is high it will be holding the address when ale is low it will be holding the data that's it so that's just to tell that whether address is there or data is there in a particular pin next question is there any register that programmers cannot use for storing data for example 10h cannot be used for storing data this is just a simple question there are some registers called special function registers for example a register which is connected to the clocking unit a register which is connected to the interrupt control cannot be used for storing general purpose data the term itself is very clear special function register whenever we call something as a special function register it might not qualify for storing the general purpose data what is an accumulator how is it useful i just told you an example of um, arithmetical and logical unit towards usage of bus now see this figure i have an alu i send the data from a i send the data from b this a and b are called as the math registers a is called accumulator b is called math register and these two are very very important for any operation any microcontroller or microprocessor will certainly have this math registers and accumulator is the most commonly used term next question how important is general purpose register in a microprocessor or a controller well these are called math registers i am using it for mathematical operations as i told you sometime back but there are general purpose registers which might be used by the programmer for doing some other operation for example if i want to store a value temporarily i need to go with a general purpose register so uh, with respect to 8085 if i say there are general purpose registers like b c d um, h l something like that so all these are general purpose registers which can be used by the programmer for storing any data of his wish and they are not driven by the machine instead they are driven by the programmer we will see the next set of 10 questions shortly i hope you guys enjoyed the session thank you